This is ODAT Chat, your instant connection to recovery and community, one day at a time. This podcast may contain strong language, sexual content, and spiritual truth. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to ODAT Chat. My name is Arlena, and I'll be your host. In case you didn't know, ODAT stands for One Day at a Time. I named it after my favorite 12-step group that meets daily, which is how we do recovery, one day at a time. You might be wondering about the purpose of the podcast, and what I can tell you is that besides wanting to clear up a lot of misconceptions about addiction and recovery, I also wanted to share the teachers, ideas, and exercises that have helped me on my own journey over the last 22 years that kind of fall outside the parameters of 12-step groups, so... Um, I'd also like to share a thought for the day, and Google tells me this one comes from Ianla Van Zant. She says, at every single moment, we are given the opportunity to choose our future. What we do today will determine what we face next week, next month, or next year. So there you have it. Choose wisely, my friends. And in this episode, I'll be talking with Lisa, who shares her recovery from alcohol and drugs. Uh, Lisa talks about what it was like to be an alcoholic mother, getting sober, and struggling to stay sober over the years, as well as some fun stuff like dating and recovery. That was She is a kick in the pants, let me tell you. Lisa is both funny and very smart, and it made for a great conversation. For me, at least, anyway. (laughs) I hope you enjoy it, too. Uh, Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you for connecting with us. If you haven't yet, please visit odatchat.com and read Sharing the Secret. That'll sort of give you a feeling of what the intention is and how we can help. So uh, let's see. There will be show notes on the website and an opportunity for you to leave comments and feedback. I really want you to feel like you can participate. If you have questions, suggestions, uh, you can feel free to leave that on the blog. So that's a long intro, but it's over. And with that, please enjoy this conversation with Lisa. Lisa, thanks for joining me on the first ever ODAT chat podcast. I'm super excited to have you. Thank you for asking me. So this is the first one, and what we'll do, the format will be, is I'll just ask you a little bit about yourself so people who are listening can sort of um, have a frame of reference of uh, who you are, and then we'll um, talk a little bit today about relationships in sobriety. Super fun. Super fun. (laughs) (laughs) Or not. I don't know. Yeah. We'll decide after my talk. (laughs) Right, right. I know you've had some challenges, so I'm not going to act like I didn't know that. Right. (laughs) (laughs) In all things with Lisa Newton. Right. Okay. So a little bit about you. So let's just start with some general stats. So how long have you been sober? Four years, September 29th. Nice. And how old are you? I'm 47. Are you, you're obviously single. single. Yes. Dating would be inappropriate. (laughs) (laughs) Right. If you're married, dating would be. Unless I'm an open monogamous. You know, there's, it takes all kinds. Exactly. You've seen it. We've seen it all. Good question. Yeah. (laughs) Good to clarify. And we're currently in San Jose. Uh, where did you grow up? Santa Clara until I was 12 and then east side San Jose. Okay. And how long, let's see, your parents, where are they from? My mom is from Detroit, Michigan, and my father is from like Idaho or somewhere, Boise. Yeah. Where did, uh, what did they, are they both alive? Mm-hmm. And what do they do professionally? My dad's a retired police officer and my mom works for a management company. For like rental property man. Oh, management. property management. Yeah. Okay, and um, you have siblings. Yes, I have a brother who is forty-one and a sister who is twenty-ish something. We're not close, obviously. <laughs> well, <laughs> my dad she's remarried. Dad. <laughs> she's my daughter's she's age. Your, yeah. oh, okay, so yeah. she's your daughter's age. Well, like twenty. She's probably 24, 25. Wow, that's a trip, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So um, your parents divorced when you were young. Yep, my parents separated when I was eight and divorced when I was twelve. And my brother oh, okay. was six. That's a long separation. Yeah. Before divorce. My dad didn't want that marriage to end. Oh, he didn't? Yeah. Oh, okay. That had to be um, yeah. challenging. Yeah, it was awful. He was an active alcoholic at the time, so. Okay, and what about your mom? Uh, codependent to the T. Oh, okay. Look that up in the dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> and there's her picture. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah, she is. Yeah. Love you, Mom. Love you, Mama. No judgment. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, okay, that's interesting. And then, um, so your dad never got sober. No. Well, no. he he had he was a functioning alcoholic, so he would work and then come home and binge drink, which is exactly the alcoholic I became. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, 
Now he's a daily trainer. Now he's a, okay, so it's progress. Yes. Okay. And let's see, what else is important? So what do you do professionally? I'm an escrow officer for almost 30 years now. Right. So you, we were talking earlier that you started doing this in like high, high school. school. Yeah, right yeah. out of high school. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I failed a typing test at Title, and they said, you talk a lot. Go do escrow. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you talk a lot. Yeah. And, so and here how, we are on the broadcast. Like, you're like destined for this moment. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I, actually don't, I actually wanted to get into radio. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Okay. We have a face for TV, so <laughs> you could have done both. With filters. <laughs> <laughs> With filters. As if the high definition is not oh, my friend. Yeah, high definition is not my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. No, no, you are gorgeous. Um, Thank you. Nothing to be ashamed of there. But no, this is super fun. I think we'll have a good time because uh, we. Listen, when you and I get together, <laughs> we always laugh a lot. There's a little tears. And, yeah. But it's always a good time. So, yes. I, yeah, I thought it would be fun to sort of talk about, like, listen, I'm married. I've been together with my husband since I got, I was five months sober. This is 22 years ago. Yeah. So, but I've been married a really long time. And over the years, I've seen my friends go through the dating scene. And it seems to be vastly different today than mm-hmm. it was like 20 years ago. I think with the internet and all the applications that are available and the good quick Lord. drive through um, relationship statuses and Facebook and everything else. It's just, it's this conglomerate of, of destiny is no longer an, uh, an effect. I mean, you don't, you don't organically meet people. I mean, that's Not really, no, huh? I mean, you don't run into people at the grocery store and you're like, Oh my God, he's so cute. And that you exchange numbers. It's like right. you check his profile out first on Facebook and then you're like, Oh, maybe you, you know? Google it. Yeah. You make sure. Yeah. He's not a sex offender. Which, right. You know, we'll go back to that. And, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. That happens. It's important not to mm-hmm. skip steps. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of shame um, associated to stalking, but I think it's actually... Probably a good idea. It's probably a good idea. I'm thinking it's a good idea. I think we've actually shifted to the point where stalking is now a mandatory factor. It really is. It's just doing your research. Like, before people would just ask around, but why not go to... Why go to the, why not go to Google? Google, Google knows everything. Well, and friends, friends and family are misled a lot because they're being yeah. told by the person what their behavior is, right? Yeah. So yeah. unless they're willing to like throw out their friend, they're right. not going to tell you the truth, really. Unless you know, unless they're friends like I have, that'll be like, oh, bitch, that outfit is not good. Take that off. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that guy's no. Go bueno. back and change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that boy is no bueno. I know him yeah. and his his past. So yeah, yeah, definitely no. different. And plus, your friends and family have a vested interest in an agenda, right? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so yeah. who knows? I think that for you, watching people like me date must be like a like hearing a drunk log. Like you hear somebody get up and hear you hear about their bottom, and you're like, oh, thank God, I don't have to do that ever again. Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. gotta be like what dating sounds like for you. I would yeah. only imagine when you're in a happy marriage, you must be like, thank you, Bob. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think we had that conversation last night. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what brought it up, but we were like, I was like, oh, did you hear about so and so? It's like. Thank God we're married. Yeah. I, I, and, and in a good marriage. You know what I mean? Like, there's a big difference. There's, I know a lot of married people that are, I'm like, why aren't you, why aren't you dating? But, you know what I mean? Like, you, <laughs> no, should, right? you should be dating other people. Um, <laughs> I know you're married, but have you considered dating? <laughs> I know that ringing means a lot to you, but you might want to take it off. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for you me. You might want to rethink that whole marriage thing. That whole marriage thing. Yeah. And, like, for me, it's like, now I've told you before, like, the whole knowing you and how Bob is and how you both yeah. are together. You've taught me a lot about love and respect and relationships oh, and, so and just a short little bit of time. Yeah. So it's like you've raised the bar for me as a woman, like, oh. on how I want to date. And that's right. why when we came up with this last scenario we talked about earlier, it was, it was not about... Um, going with the past behaviors it was more about who I want to be today dating right. in sobriety right and I need to be as authentic in my in my dating world as I am in my sobriety mm. and that's a yeah. that's a big step you because know, I survived dating right survived dating just like life I just kind of went with it whatever was thrown my way I was like oh all right you're cute it's fine I'm gonna do this and now I have to actually process my future like do I want to do this do I want to invest in this person oh, that's kind of an annoying trait. Is this going to be something I'm going to be willing to deal with right away? And then those are thoughts that I'm having right away. Just like if I think through having a drink, mm-hmm. you know, I think forward, like what's going to happen if I have that one drink? Yeah, I think I can have one, but then I remember what happens. I have to have 10, <laughs> right. right? And then yeah. I'm naked somewhere on a bar stool and people are trying to throw me out of a bar. It's not cute, you know? It's, you know, everyone's like, oh, you naked? No, no. When I was drunk, that's not hot. That is a, that is a hot mess. It's a hot mess. Hot mess. 
<laughs> You're like, put something over her. Like, yeah, oh, please. Let's, let's, we're all embarrassed for yes, her. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Guys are not like, oh, damn. They're like, oh, damn. <laughs> In the right. worst way. In the worst possible yeah, way. Yeah. They're not exactly thinking, I want to take, take her, her to meet my mom. No, they're thinking, I want to take her home to her house and leave her there. <laughs> leave her there. <laughs> With a cloth over her. Like, yeah. You're going to be okay. Let's take her outside and let's <laughs> shut the door <laughs> open so she can't come back in. I was the one that guy's like, come on, let's go. And he walks out and you walk behind him and he closes the door behind you. Yeah, that would be me. That yeah. was me. It was so fun. Yeah, it was super great. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It's, so, yeah. No. So to answer your question, yes, I do have that feeling like, wow, I'm so grateful that, mm-hmm. that I'm, you know, have a good husband and we have a good relationship and, and that we don't have to try to, you know, find somebody. Right. Although we have had the conversation of, well, I told Bob, I said, well, listen, if you die, I, this time I'm going to marry for money. Oh. And I'm going to marry some old guy who's going yeah. to be really good to me and just so grateful that he has me. <laughs> that sounds great tomorrow. until you look at them naked and you're like, oh, hell no, I cannot do this. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Oh, that's something you've considered. Yes, <laughs> obviously I have. I've done the research. You've I considered all yes, your options. all the options. You know, when those older gentlemen come a-courting, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Can't, no. No. Which, no. So what's your parameter? I probably, I actually am usually between 40 and I usually say about my age, about 47, 48, maybe 50. But because there's not, like after 50, 55, 60, usually they start to look like my dad, um, you know, with their shirts tucked into their belts and, you know, their ten- tennis shoes. And like, you know, I'm a little superficial, I guess. Because Well, like, see, don't you feel like those are things that you can kind of clean up? Well, I think if I have to work that hard, I'm, I'm lazy. I'm a lazy dater. <laughs> I'm like, oh, if I have to redress you, this is usually a man, how he dresses is pretty much how he's going to be. Like, even if you change his ways, he's going to default back to his comfort zone, right? Right, right. Men are a creature of habit. I've done the research. I know this. <laughs> so if they're going to wear the sweaty pair of sweatpants right. and you burn them, they will find another pair of sweatpants that they can make that disgusting dirty sweaty pair right they turn them into they the... will make them their pants Got it. okay so that has been my his my experience i mean i'm sure there's one out of every twenty five thousand men <laughs> that would be like oh i'm down with you trying to fix me up yeah but for the most they part, don't like think, that is what like you're that. saying yeah and i i figure if i have to change somebody then i shouldn't be with them well that's a good point because i have heard that uh women think that they can change a man and then the men think that the women won't change well, that's pretty much true. Yeah. yeah. And I, I but the women like change and the men don't. Well, we, we <laughs> usually do change. We become, we, I, speaking from my experience, I morph into what I think they might like. I'm a fucking chameleon. Sorry. No, no. Okay, good. This will be explicit. Yay! <laughs> I'm a fucking chameleon. So <laughs> what I do is I will morph myself into being more into rested. Into rested? That's a new word. Into, interested, interested in what they like. So, oh, yeah. um, example, I would date a cowboy, so I'd start to listen to country western music. Now, right. I'm not, I'm not um, in a disagreement with loving country western music, but I can uh-huh. only take it for an interim. <laughs> but I found myself driving around in my car with a country western concert on all the time, and I'm like, who, who, who am I? Who am I? I literally was like, turn this shit off. This is not your go-to. Go back to your you yeah. know, hip-hop crap that you like, and, and <laughs> right. whatever. You know, you don't have to be... You know, I'm trying to find. Uh, um, I'm trying to become what they what would attract them and right. have something in common, which I don't have in a cowboy. Because I'm not at all a cowgirl. But mm-hmm. you know, I'm mm-hmm. that that is something that I try to do, and it's okay to do it. I think in a little little interims, yeah. you know, in little ways. But I I know myself enough to know that I need to be careful with that and check that because I could become, like I always said when I was a when I was newly drunk or newly sober. I would say um, I was like a vase. Whatever color water you poured in me is what I what you saw. Okay. So if you looked at me and you wanted me to be blue, I'd pour blue in. Okay. If you told me blue is my favorite color, I'd be blue. Right. If you said, oh, I, actually, I feel like orange today, I'd be orange because I wanted you to like me. But, but don't you think that that's a very common trait among uh, people in recovery? Oh, I'm, the chameleon. Probably. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, I'm sure you picked that up growing yeah. up, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You had to gauge your parents, especially your dad, mm-hmm. to see what kind of mood he was in when he got home mm-hmm. so that you knew how to be yep. so that uh, you could receive, you his know, not, either not receive his affection or not get in trouble. Or not be available for the affection because there was a little bit of weirdness with that too. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I had a little bit of a, he always hugged a little too long and... It felt creepy. Yeah, it felt creepy. And um, I don't have any memory in my childhood, so I don't know if anything happened to me. I have absolutely, I have like snapshots, and I don't know if it's from actual memories or pictures that I've seen. 
How do you know what your earliest memory is? I have like weird. You have snapshots of like early childhood, but yeah. do you remember like first grade, no. second grade? No. Not at all. I don't oh. remember going to school. I remember napping in kindergarten. I remember laying on the mats at kindergarten. Wow. Okay. But and you I remember, remember your first grade teacher. Um, or... I remember my kindergarten teacher because she was a like a clown esque type woman, really bright lipstick and bright hair, <laughs> big, and okay. she used to eat apples and um, American cheese slices, and she oh, would funny. wear this bright red lipstick, and she would eat the and the would lipstick the would get and she would just the lipstick would disappear, oh, and she would eat it. Because she'd live a ring and then it would disappear. And I remember being, oh, I remember wow. that. So I remember color and I remember um, um, experiences to that. Sure. Some attachment somehow to that. Some yeah. some way that caused, and what's funny is my go-to snack is American cheese slices and apples. Really? Yeah. I don't, I, I it, it, and I only think that there was probably a safety feeling for me in that room with mm-hmm. her. Hmm. Um, and so for some reason that is a very comforting snack for me. It's it's something that is attached to that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really odd, a really odd connection. Yeah. That Um, is interesting. And, um, I remember being, um, I remember wanting to be invisible all the time. I was always nervous and sick to my stomach. So I always wanted to be invisible. Don't see me. Don't see me. And now I spend all my life trying to see me. You guys see me. Please see me. Oh, and it's Somebody see me. Yeah. 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 I want to be loud and obnoxious and crazy. I want to be the life of the party. So you see me. Yeah. Do you hear me? Oh, you don't hear me, so I'm gonna tell a funny joke. See me? Yeah. You know that's really my like my pushing. That's my driver. You right. Know? Yeah. Well, that's the need for validation yeah. and recognition and right. And and accent. the fact that my mom, you know, programmed me with the thing of like, well, you know, you're nothing really without a man. If a man doesn't want you, then you're really not. So carrying that into the present day, that um, idea of that you're nothing without a man. Mm-hmm. You know that I mean. <laughs> That's got to be hard when you're trying to find somebody to date. Mm-hmm. You have to be asking yourself all the time, is this guy really, why am I doing this? Right. Well, and also think about how much the social media and TVs and movies and everything, everything you see is couples. Everything. Everything is driven for the couple. Everything mm. is driven um, commercials or families in houses and what the domestic situation looks like there's a couple here and there that they're coming out with it or like one mom and getting the kids up for school you know you mm-hmm. see occasionally those yeah. but if you really focus on if you really take a look at what I'm talking about you'll see it it's on Facebook huh. everybody's coupling up um, you you know it's 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 that's what I think drives a lot of women. yeah there's no relationship status that when you revert back to single it's just single there's yeah. no like Single and I'm fine. Single and fabulous. <laughs> like, I chose this shit. Yeah, I'm right. choosing to be. And if you do that, then guys are like, oh, fucking bitter bitch. You know, right? <laughs> They're like, oh, that dude dumped her shit. You know, it's like they don't, you can't own being single because it's not, it's, it's. It's not a status thing. It, it's not a status thing. They no, no you're, that's interesting because as a married person, I didn't even notice. Yeah. That everything's geared towards couples. Right. But you wouldn't. I notice it because it makes me feel bad. Oh, so when I go to yeah. Starbucks in the morning and I see couples, uh-huh. it, it, it breaks my heart. When I was newly separated, I remember going to a Starbucks and wanting to commit suicide. Not uh, legitimately, but feeling just very horrible with my children. And how long have you been separated? 12 years. You were married for how long? Seven years. So you married seven years. How many kids? Three. Three kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, I knew that, but yeah. I don't know. 19, that. 16, and 14. Okay. Two girls and a boy. And my ex-husband moved to North Carolina when my baby son was two. Oh, he was two? Yeah. When he moved to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So two, four, and six, and their dad left. Wow. Yeah. So Had I've you been, been drinking at that mm-hmm. time? No. You started drinking after? I started drinking, well, yeah, I started drinking, I started dabbling. Um, I, I started drinking right at the end of my marriage. And then I didn't go oh. full bore until probably about five years after. Okay. And then started binge drinking really badly. Because okay. I was hanging out with people that would allow me to drink that way. I okay. started to find a new herd, right? So mm-hmm. as soon as I found those people that were like, oh. And then as soon as they started hanging out with me, like, oh, look, she's, <laughs> this is crazy. You have crossed yeah, the yeah, line, yeah, you crazy bitch. crossed the line, you crazy bitch. And so then I moved friends and would go to bars by myself and, you know, right. left my kids home alone. I mean, I did all that stuff that you hear about. And, right, um, right. And dating was basically like, you're cute, let's go, you know, and, and I'll <laughs> shoot you out in the you know morning before right. my kids are up. You know, cut you loose in yeah, the morning. Cut you and um, and so I to get away with that behavior, I'd have to drink. Right. You know, so, it's a vicious yeah, cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Okay. But so it's been twelve years since your divorce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah, and I've you've had... only had one significant relationship. Since, well, two. Two significant relationships since then. Okay. Yeah. So it lasted more than the three-week, the four-week, or six-week mark. Right. So your current... Um, so I heard you say that you are approaching the dating mm-hmm. scene with... Mm-hmm. You're, you're more present, mm-hmm. you, you know, and it's easy, I would imagine, to just move forward with your default assumptions. Like, mm-hmm. I think everybody has <coughs> assumptions mm-hmm. when um, they're growing up. Yeah. And you're in the process of re-examining your basic assumptions. Mm-hmm. Like, who am I now today? Mm-hmm. Who do I want to date? Yeah. You know, what might be a good fit for you? Mm-hmm. So do you well, not stab them in, in the neck with a fork if they do that thing that drives you crazy? Yeah. Yes, they don't like that. No, when you... stabbing in the neck is not. Not. No, it's frowned upon. It's frowned upon. Yeah. yeah. I think there are laws. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Go to jail. So now. that's bad. That's yeah. bad. It's like on women who kill. I love all the shows. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't tell people that. Sorry, just kidding. This is not getting me on any <laughs> it's more. Just dates. jokes. Yeah. I know. So I was gonna say. Really not going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I promise not to stab you. <laughs> Please date me. <laughs> Any man listening to this, I'm really nice. <laughs> I'll always stab you once. <laughs> it's just the, just yeah. the one time. Just don't be, uh, don't yeah. be stupid and we'll be fine. Yeah, don't be a bag of dicks. We'll be fine. <laughs> bag of dicks. <laughs> That's super awesome. Okay, so um, what would you say would be your... So now we have an age range. Mm-hmm. Do you have a, a preference on like income level or job or um like career as long as he has a job that's a plus you know <laughs> must have a job must have a job um can't live at home that's a that's a deal breaker mom and dad like mom and dad no Jeez, yeah. can you imagine no i know a lot of men that are doing that now they're going through divorces or they're also can't be married i don't want to oh, date yeah. a guy i also don't want to date a guy that's married and going through a divorce okay um, has to be all done that's also a deal breaker for me i mean we can be friends and you know Until but i don't want to i don't want to fucking be your counselor through your divorce that is not uh, my go-to and that is what you're doing when you date someone who's going through a divorce you're their counselor, and I don't get paid for that mm-hmm. shit. And you have to have sex with him? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> not going to happen. Um, I'll, just, I'll just be over here. I'll just be over here. Let me know when you're done. Um, so for me, I don't, my my deal breaker would probably, they'd have to have a job. They'd have to probably make at least, I'd say, sixty to 70000 minimum. And let's just let's just qualify that, because we are in the uh, San Cal. Francisco yeah. Bay Area, yeah. where... The median house price is right. like eight hundred thousand now. Right. So uh, I mean, I know it's not romantic to be like, so what do you make? But um, I work really hard and I make six figures, and it, you know, I need a man also that would not be intimidated by my your income. My income. Yeah. Um, the fact that I, you know, am uh, independent, you know, all those things are hard to seems to be hard to find. Um, and you don't care whether they have kids or not. No, I'd prefer them not to be under the age of like fifteen. Okay. You know, I, I okay. Kind of like I like them to be like on a later part of life. You know, I don't. I've done my little kid thing. So. You've done your time in high school. I've done my time. Know. I feel like I did my jail time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I raised three children by myself, and my yeah. youngest is now fourteen, almost fifteen, and I'm like I'm on the end. Yeah. I've got a five year plan, man. And, yeah. You, know, you can see the light. I can see the light. I want to travel, and I want to. I want to break away from the monotony of my day to day life, which has been work and you know not. Not going on vacations and not... That brings up an interesting point. So, of, you know, what would you like out of a relationship? Like, and so if, like, when you think about a partner, you're thinking about somebody that you like to travel with, Mm -hmm. go to concerts with, go out to dinner. Yeah. Somebody that actually has a mind of their own and makes plans. Uh, You know, somebody who actually... um, Has a friend. Has friends, has a life outside of me, which is really important. Um, uh, It's kind of a Because you have a life. I do have a life. You have a lots very busy of, life. You have a very busy life. You have a really strong. You have. Do you care if they're in recovery or not? I would. I don't. I used to say I'd prefer that they were, but now after being around some that are, <laughs> I don't know about that. But um, yeah, recovery. You'd have to be solid. Solid recovery. And um, but I also don't think it's a deal breaker if they're not. You know, if they're if they're just a normal drinker. Mm-hmm. I was married to one. I mean, That's you know, it didn't deal. bother me at all. Okay. When I'm when I'm sober and if I am practicing a program of of good sobriety, it wouldn't matter if there's booze in my house. That should not be a thing for me. You know okay. what I mean? For for me. Right. I you know, it may not be for everybody else, but for me, I have wine in my my cabinet. I don't 
it doesn't call to me, it doesn't appeal to me, and that was what I drank. Well, you recoil as if from a flame. Fine. Yeah, and I <laughs> yeah. truly do not have any desire to drink it. It, it does, I know it's in there. I don't go, right. oh, I know that wine's in there. It's the only time I just said it is when I was like, oh yeah, I think. Well, maybe I don't. Maybe I just use that for that last pasta meal. You know, like I don't. It doesn't scare me right. because I know I don't want to go there at right. all. Yeah. Um, so if that was their get down or they wanted to have a beer with friends and we had, you know, people over, no that cares. would be no big deal. I could okay. care less about that. I did 10 years without a program being around it all the time because my ex-husband's friends were all partiers. In fact, I've seen a couple of them in the rooms now. Oh, isn't that funny? Well, mm-hmm. it is progressive. Yes, it is. So. And I'm glad to see them. Yeah. The, op- the other fun. alternative is bad. Right. Yeah. So they're in there. So, um... So you have your parameters of kind of what you would like to see, and it sounds like you're sort of re-evalu- you, reevaluating your own um, your own self. Mm-hmm. Um, you're working the steps. Yeah. You're sort of um, getting rid of, you know, continuing to peel that onion, yeah. so to speak, in, in your recovery. And I've had some major breakthroughs lately <clears throat> with this last situation that we were just talking about, but it's mm-hmm. like for me. Um, dating and recovery is, a, is, is interesting because like if, like you said, if you're working the steps and you're working a program, it raises your bar or it should of what right. you are willing to accept before when I met people, I'm like, Oh, you're, you have a history of uh, domestic violence. Oh, but that was before me. You know, like I would, I'm, I'm being funny, but it's like, you know, like yeah. I did date somebody who was a registered sex offender and his story was, I was a meth head and I was actively using and it was bad, but I married her and I did the right thing because we were young and dumb and the parents gave her to me. So she wasn't 10 years old. She no, was she like was 14. Late. 14. Oh, okay. And over time he ended up marrying he her? He married her. The parents signed off on her and gave her to him. She was 16, I think. <gasps> when they got married? Mm-hmm. They went that to Nevada. Is twisted. Yeah, really twisted story. But you know, obviously, it all made sense because a twisted story. Not about I don't know much that. Shocking. And um, I mean, not that this is affiliated with right. Any, no, no. Any not AA, but whatever. Like, yeah. Um, he, you know, I, I, you know, was because I'm a Christian and I believe in, you know, how am I to judge somebody else in their history? And you know, yes, that sucks. But you know, okay, gross. You're never gonna spend the night in my house with my kids because that's just not appropriate behavior. One. If anybody ever found out that you were a registered sex offender, I don't want my kids paying the price for my decision. Right. You know, so I there was a lot of, of, of effort that went into that relationship because of that knowledge. Uh-huh. Um, he was up front with you? He, he told me that after our, um, well, he had to tell me. He wasn't going to tell me, I don't think, because um, a police officer pulled us over because we were playing around in a car. You whore. No. I'm a total whore. <laughs> and the cop came over to the door and said, um, do you know who you're in the car with? Wow. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's all, you need to Google your your friend. And I'm like, okay. So, of course, I said to him, when he got in the car, he knew. And, right. and he said, what did they tell you? And I said, that you need to tell me why I would need to Google you. And so he told me. Oh. And, you know, it was, uh, I was, he was devastated. And it was a truly bi- valid, watching him try to explain that story to me was yeah, heartbreaking. That's... You know, and I have empathy. And yeah. I wasn't sure I was going to date him, but I really liked him. I yeah. really, there was a chemistry. I knew his family. I knew him before I met him, like, mm. because he dated a friend of mine in high mm. school. And there was a huge connect. And so I, you know, was like, I get it. You fucked up. You made a mistake. And we've talked about my mistakes. And it's like, how can I judge someone else if I'm not, ex- you know, I'm supposed to be able to forgive myself. You know, that whole thing. Right, There's right, a lot right. of confusion in that. Yeah. And um, I'm not making excuses. It was a bad decision. It was a bad mistake. And I chose to date him um, not knowing about the second offense. What? With a younger girl. All right. Yeah. And there are many of those in the rooms. Oh, yeah. Many. 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 And um, therefore, I'm a little less gung-ho about any of the guys in the room. But you know what? I mean, I guess there is an element of that wherever you go. Oh, yeah. Like, sex offenders don't wear signs. No. They are not... My next door neighbor's one. And we didn't even know. It didn't pull up. Oh, it didn't? Because he moved or something? Yeah. He was living with his dad and moved and then came back. Now he's there. An unregistered... Yeah, now he's registered. Yeah. Now it shows. Now it shows. Yeah. Because he... And it's across the street from the school. He's allowed. (gasps) He's allowed? Yes. It's legal. Lord have mercy. I know. So be careful, parents out there. They are everywhere. Yeah. This guy's crazy. He walked by my house wearing fake boobs and a, a sparkly tank top. He did? Yeah. He's fantastical. Bold. He's bold. 
bald and he wore boobies. Yeah, boobies. <laughs> Sparkly blue top with jogger shorts. It was. I was half asleep and woke up at three in the morning and saw this dude walking by. I thought, I okay, please well, don't let me be dreaming. That's as close as you're gonna get to um, a sign. Yeah, but yeah. That's up. a sign. <laughs> Listen, That's a sign. If a bald head and Here's fake, spark, fake boobs and a sparkly shirt doesn't scream, <laughs> stay That's the fuck away from me, yeah. I don't know what does. Well, before I was worried about my daughters, now I'm more worried about my son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Listen, yeah. I told you and I said, make sure when you shower, you lock all the doors, because I think our neighbor might like you. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. yeah, this is, I mean, listen, I have two boys, and um, we never let them spend the night at the neighbor's house, mm-hmm. or I was always super protective, just because I was. It takes one time. Yeah. You ruin them forever. No, listen, I've been in the rooms long enough where I want to, I think the statistic now is that one out of four women has been abused in mm-hmm. their lifetime. I'm I'm going to venture to say that in the rooms, there's one out of every four who has not been mm-hmm. abused. Mm-hmm. Like the, the woman that has not been abused mm-hmm. is the rare exception. Right, right. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. Yeah, so it's like no wonder we have a hard time dating. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad beat my mom. Oh, so I have that too. Yeah, I have. I'm I'm like I'm like a spinning wheel of wonder. Like, oh yay! Look at there. Like every door, every door I open, I'm like, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. I'm like the winner of the lottery ticket. Yay! I got them all. You got them all. Yeah. So so for twelve years. Yeah, twelve years. I get it. Uh, and and it's funny because we went out last night with a bunch of girlfriends and um, we went dancing and we were in a club and this drunk guy decided he was going to be my best friend, which is what I'm happens. I'm so excited to hear this story because we didn't talk about it. So what happens is is that I this really attractive man picks up on one of my friends and is sober, the only sober man in the in the bar, it hits on my friend, which I'm happy for. But I'm like, really? Like I don't get that guy. I and I said out loud because I am a self fulfilling prophecyist, and I said. <laughs> What I get is two-fisted drunk guy, backwards baseball hat, going, hey, you want a little cock in you? That's my guy. That is my guy. Literally, two minutes later, we come back to the table, and that dude comes walking over to me, hat on forward, but in my age, probably a little bit older, comes waddling over, decides he wants to be my BFF. Oh, you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm here visiting from San Diego because I'm trying to get over my girlfriend, who's 28. And I'm like, "Uh, you are how old? And he's like, 52. And I was like, okay, well done, sir. Okay, you know, and we're yelling because the music is Super so loud. loud. And now I've lost my voice, so I can't talk back, and he's just yammering on about his life and his well, problems. because he doesn't troubles. care what you have to say. Yeah. He's like, oh, what? He just wants what? to talk at you. Yeah, he's like just talking at me. Mm-hmm. And then he literally grabs me up off the mm-hmm. dance floor to go dance, and I thought we were going to fast dance because they're playing Led Zeppelin. And um, he's like, how long has it been since you slow danced? I'm like, how long has it been since you've been sober? <laughs> right. But um, then the next thing I know, he's got his hand in my hair. He's got his <gasps> arm around my neck. He's like pulling me all the way up across his body. Like I can't pull my body away. And I'm a strong bitch. So like, <laughs> you, seriously, I can't break away from this dude. And he's a big muscular guy. Whoa. So I was kind of freaking out a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay. This... And he's literally like pushing his face against mine, trying to get my head to move towards oh. him. Like he's going to kiss me. And I was like, oh, oh, this is not happening. And I literally kept pushing him away. We go walking back over and we sit down and he goes, I finally broke away and I go back over and he goes, your friend's so guarded. You know you've got a, ba- a wall up. And I'm thinking to myself, drunk guy can figure that out? How come 99% of the other guys can't figure that shit out? <laughs> you have a wall up. You have a wall up. Yeah, I'm, dude. I'm sorry. Assholes. <laughs> He's like, why didn't you fall down with your legs spread open? That's so weird. <laughs> I'm supposed to be able to drop down on top of you right here on the dance floor. Yeah. Have it's like. Copulate with you. Come on. Right. But it was, and then he tried it again a second time, and I'm like, oh, all right, dude, that's enough. You have got to go. You've got to go. So I finally gra- got my stuff and went in the bathroom to escape him because he's drunk and doesn't get the clue. Drunk guys, you don't get the clue. Um, so I said, I'm going to go to the bathroom. So we walk away, and Allison grabs my my bag, and we go into the bathroom for a minute, and then we come out, and he'd already moved on to some other 28 year old, and of all you, that's what he needs to be with. You know, I'm not going to, but that's that what's that. that, you know, that's what you get in a bar. You know, and I said to my girlfriends, right. I go, did I call it? There's the two-handed guy, the guy with, he only had one beer. Yeah. But, you know, he was like, oh, you want a little cock? And yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's yeah, what yeah, he was yeah. trying to do. Insert. Yeah, insert <laughs> ticket here. And I was like, I'm, I'm good. It's not Chuck E. Cheese. I'm not going to spit a bunch of tickets out of you. Like, yeah, you won. <laughs> no, dude. No. And but, so, which begs the question, um, if you're not, like, where do you go to meet guys? Like, it's difficult to meet men at meetings. Mm-hmm. We talked about doing a dating app. Yes, we did. Which would be super fun. Which I still think we should look into. Yeah. 
Allison did tell me though yesterday that there's a dating website that's affiliated with Facebook that does a thing for it. It's um, like a meetup thing. Yeah. Well, what it, no, it does is it it, it um, puts people that are single in your category because you know mutual friends, so it'll connect you. Oh, so, interesting. which I thought was kind of, I'm like, oh, wait, what? So I actually have to text her today because I'm going to ask her for what the name of that is because I'll keep getting picked uh, on by these 70 year old men that like to hit me up on Facebook Messenger. That's my new thing. Ew. I'm being asked out on the daily by 60, 70 year old men on Messenger. Like, oh, hi. And because I'm a shameless. Just it's gross. Shit. Like, do you have no like self awareness at all? Well, here's the thing that made me feel a little bit better because I did ask a man about this and I said, why would it? 70 year old man or 6 year old man think that I would want to go out with them I mean now I'm not like the most beautiful woman in the world but I, I hold myself pretty up there in, in yeah. rank, ranking Yeah. and what that does to me is it deflates or even not attractive men like paunchy fat guys who keep hitting on me and I'm like oh, why do you think that I would go out with you and my guy friend said men they see you the way you see the men you're attracted to like your age range like I usually do like younger men not like 20s but I do like the look of younger men so uh-huh. I'm attracted to a physique type okay and he was saying what they're looking at is the same thing you look at they're like I want to date that girl you're the woman the women your age hate because you they the women your age that want to date a man that that age want to get that guy or I'm sorry the women his age they hate you because uh, they're going to the younger woman right it's the same story it's just right. that our age brackets moved up right, right right we're not the 40 year old wife with the husband that's left you for the 20 year old woman we're now the 60 year old wife with the husband that's leaving you for the 47 year old woman right the brackets just shifted you know and I have thought that there's like this circle of appropriateness right right this circle of age appropriateness because there was a time can you teach when... a class for this please because <laughs> men don't get it absolutely right. well and it's funny because I was working with this guy and he said to me um he was much younger time whatever and then he was like oh what was it like when you were young and I was all Ugh! and then I thought oh yeah I actually you know just it's like I have no self awareness, right? It's like yeah. oh, I just see this young guy and he's attractive, and he's like, t- he basically is telling me I'm old. And then I realize, you know what? He's 16 years younger than me, mm-hmm. and it's not appropriate for a guy 16 years younger to me. You know what I mean? So yeah. you know, there's just like this circle of age appropriateness, and it it's about 10 years and yeah. or less actually. It's probably five years on either yeah. side. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, so. You know, just the habit of uh, seeking outside validation. Mm -hmm. I have this awareness that, you know, younger than five years probably won't be looking at me like whatever. And They do. Sorry. They do. (laughs) I I get on Instagram probably once every two weeks, I get a 20-something-year-old kid hit me up. Isn't that weird? And I know what they want. They well, think I'm going to be like, oh, I'm home alone and have nothing to do. So sure, you can come and have sex with me. Thanks. You know, yeah, like I'm going like to give you a thank milf, you card. Yeah. The whole milk uh, Yeah. Fetish. I'm going I'm to buy you, you know, I'm going to take care of you, you cute little hot stuff. And you think that you're going to just come in? Gross. And years ago, I'm going to dump like, and leave. Oh, yeah. That's what I did. When I first left my husband, I was like, oh, damn, you're fine. I'd pick him up in bars and be like, come on, let's go. And they were beautiful, beautiful and fun. But reality is they couldn't carry a conversation with handles, you know? So it's like, you know, I'm like, oh my God, really? I can't, you're killing me. Like, there's no banter and it's just all sex. So right. if, if I was in you that... You say that like it's a bad thing. Right? If I was in that place, <laughs> I would be like, damn, I could get this all day long, you know? But I'm not, I, that's not my You're just not interested no, in it. No, not this time. You not can't this eat cake for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And not expect to be fat. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and at some point have guys be like, no, nah, I'm good. You've been with all the cake. <laughs> They're like, bitch, you fat. You, you fat. You've been with all the cake. You've been with all of it. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm going to bet. Yeah. And then they ask out your 20 year younger friend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It happens. It happens. No, well, listen, um, forward. So, okay, let me just preface this um, by saying that uh, water seeks its own level, right? Mm-hmm. And so I have seen you work really hard on yourself. Right. I feel like if you want to up your game, you have to work on your own personal development. Yeah. So the one thing that I would tell people is, you know, pay attention to your friends who are complaining mm-hmm. about their partner, because really what they're doing is revealing their own character defects, right? right. Their own level of sickness. And listen, I'm not saying that. No, right. No, I get it. We all have our own yeah. level of sickness, right. but the people that you <laughs> attract um, or choose to date is sort of reflective of that. Yeah. 
right? It's like, I don't know if it's just like an energy level Mm -hmm. or boundaries. It's what you find acceptable in yourself or what you feel like you deserve. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big one too. That's a very big one. I feel like it's a constant process of self-improvement. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think for my single friends, that's the advice I would give. It's great advice. Continue to work on your own self-improvement. Keep looking in your own backyard. That's right. Yeah. And the and, and the right guy will come along and mow your damn lawn. <laughs> <laughs> mow the lawn. Boo yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. Is. I think that's a great place to end. <laughs> I have a feeling that you're going to be a regular guest and we will have lots of other time. Talk- Listen, I'm gonna have to get a follow up in like six months to find out what yeah, the heck is right. going on. Or yeah. six weeks. Who yeah, knows? yeah, it could be another couple weeks, who knows? <laughs> With the internet. Moo, me. Yeah. Could be fun. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much. Thanks for asking me. That was me. a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll do this again. It's very natural. Yay. Yes. All right, love. Thanks so much. Love you. Okay, bye. Thank you for listening to Odat Chat. Please visit odatchat.com for more episodes, to leave feedback, or suggest topics and guests. Until next time. <laughs>